Hello, this is Tom, a.k.a. Gerion here for Tabletop Taproom and Star Frontiers Gamer. We are doing space theme, so we're targeting our Star Frontiers fans, and I've got a product. The, the name on it caught my eye as a Star Frontiers Gamer, and I thought, i got to check that out. So, uh, But we're also, because it's all that's going on with the OGL, we're, we're, we're doing a third-party publisher review again. Let's take a look at old-school role-playing. Now, they produce, and I apologize, I'm doing back-to-back -back two Cepheus Engine um, third-party publishers. But old-school role-playing, uh, by and large, seems to just produce stuff for Cepheus Engine. And they've got some cool things. Like... I downloaded this um, adventure, The Sun Shined Brightly. This is a great adventure idea. They didn't have to do much to, to write this up. They've, they've they just kind of set up the setting, set up the complications, and here's the mission the player characters have. Go. And I love this because this is a, a cool idea. The, there's a, a star that's gonna about to go supernova. So it's a ticking clock. And um, there's still people, the population, there's still a lot of population on the planet. And the player characters are hired to go and get something, something or somebody. And, of course, you can already imagine the complications that could go down. And if, and if you mess around too much there, the star could go supernova while you're still in the system. And that would probably be very bad. But uh, so, like, I thought this was a great module. So I've been following um, this company and their downloads, and they just have interesting things. Like, I don't know what's in this one here. This is not one that I have uh, that I've added to my library. But just the title, Mail Order Bride. I can you can already figure what's going to go down here. Somebody is sending the player characters to go pick up his mail order bride and bring her to him. And, you know, and, and the, I can already predict based off of other products, there's going to be like a list of 20 complications. Roll a D20, pick a few of those complications, and those are in play. So I expect this to be an excellent uh, adventure. But the reason why I actually was looking at this was right here. Plant life of the frontiers of space. Because Frontier Space, written by uh, my buddy Bill Logan and Larry Moore. And um, so I'm like, oh, was this for Frontier Space? Frontiers of Space. So, oh, could it be Star Frontiers? It's not. It's Cepheus uh, Engine. But here is the product. Public domain uh, cover. And then it's just a list, alphabetical order. I think I counted 60-something plants in here. And so it's just some details on those plants. Um, you know, there's no stats, um, but it's just information on those plants. It could be the plant's poison. It could be the plant as a source of food. It could be the plant uh, it has some danger. <clears throat> you know, so... I bought this from the perspective of a Star Frontiers player. Now, I have one criticism of it, and it's a nitpicky criticism, and but it's but it's not really a criticism in that I don't have to um, I don't have to go along with the thing I'm about to criticize, and that's this. Uh, er, almost every single, almost every single listing in here will say. These thick stocks grow in, uh, on swamp worlds across the sector. So you got one plant growing on multiple worlds. To me, that makes no sense, uh, you know, unless you have an explanation for that. Now, one of the plants in here, as I was reading through, uh, was a food crop, and it was an export from Terra. It was a Terran food crop, so it came from Earth. Humanity brought it with them, and they planted it on several planets. That makes sense. I'm okay with that. But every single listing, oh, yeah, on planets across the sector. I really, I just, I hate that. I absolutely hate that. But I don't have to use it that way. Um, so as I'm going to 
as I'm going to just use this as a resource to borrow and steal from for my Star Frontiers game, we'll just just go. All right, um, <clears throat> all right. This one grows on a swamp world. It grows on Clarion, which has 90% precipitation. It's very soggy, and so you know it's very swampy. Very this plant grows there. So suddenly in my game, I will have this plant and it grows on Clarion. You know, and then others um, where it'll say, uh, like the, the Choku, these tumbleweeds can be found blowing in the wind on desert worlds across the sector. Well, right away in my mind, Laco has got some desert. So um, Choku, when I use this, I'll, I'll be using it on Laco. I... I'm okay with organisms being on multiple planets. That happens sometimes on the frontier. For instance, there was a player character submit. There was a player, uh, a fan submission to the star frontiersman for a creature called the silver heart. It was a deer with one horn, like a unicorn. And then um, a couple years later, the same artwork, same name, silver heart, was listed as a creature native to Clarion. So it's on these two different worlds. Um, and I just I just hand waved and said, you know what? It was imported to Clarion as a potential um, you know economic resource. And then some got loose and now they live in the environment. And because of <clears throat> The listing for Clarion, I believe, said that the meat was poisonous. I then hand, I then waved and ruled as game master that when they got loose on Clarion and they began eating some of the native um, plant life, this caused for toxins to build up in their uh, bodies. And when humans eat it, that's when that toxin affects them. Silver hearts on the other planet do not have that problem. But on Clarion, because it's specified, but that was not in the original listing by the fans who submitted the Silver Heart and the two different Star Frontiersman magazines. So that's how I harmonized that. I completely honored the fan submissions, but I, I, I wrote in enough backstory to explain why they're on two different planets as native species. They've, you know, they got loose on Clarion and they've been loose in the wild long enough. They're kind of considered native. You're not getting rid of them. They're there in the ecosystem. And, and then now they're quite a bit different because their meat is toxic. So uh, I love this because it's got like 60-something ideas for me to use uh, in a game. But my one, you know, I've got that one nitpick. But it's minor. And I don't know. I mean, uh, I've not really played travel. I've played... I've, I've played around the edges of Traveler. So just maybe this is standard for Traveler games. Okay, you know, maybe people are sitting out there going, Tom, you don't know. You just don't know what you don't know. Uh, this might be standard for Traveler games. Um, it's, it's just something that I want to nitpick at. And, uh, but definitely m this is a, a document worth using. I mean, we're talking about how many pages here? Uh, 16 pages of plants, about 60 something. I think I counted 60 something when I went through and counted the other night. And we get into the, oh, geez, the OGL version 1.0a, the, uh, the controversy that's going on. Uh, yeah, so they, you know, and they, <clears throat> The company, they produce these short, quick things, not a lot of artwork in them. They use public domain artwork, front and back, and uh, generally, and they bang these out. This company is banging out stuff all the time. I keep ending up going, oh, I'm really interested in that, like that, the Sunshine Brightly adventure. I thought that was great, so I was like, well, we're going to have to have that. Definitely, this document... Um, plant life of the frontiers of space. Very handy. Very handy if you're running an exploration campaign. You need a plant. You need some plant life. You're not sure what to create yourself. 
go through here, pick two or three items, add them to an ecosystem, uh, add a few creatures, and, you know, you're good to go. And so I think this is absolutely a fabulous document, a great resource to use. Yeah, I have my nitpick over it. But again, I don't have to use it that way. And neither do you. But it's definitely a useful document. So for my Star Frontiers friends, my fellow Frontiersmen, here's a great, uh, here's a great resource if you're running a game. And you just need some plant life. I would add this, even though it's a traveler product. So what? So this is old school role playing on drive through. Check them out. Um, you know, great company. Uh, it's most of these products are pay what you want. So you could actually download it and check it out for $0. Decide that you like it and then go back and, uh, and then rebuy it for a buck just to say, Hey, thank you. Or, the suggested price on that one, I think, was three dollars. So you can you can tr you can actually try it before you buy it. Nothing to lose. This is Tom for Tabletop Taproom with Star Frontiers Gamer, spotlighting a third-party publisher, old-school role-playing. Check them out. It is Cepheus Traveler, but man, I'm stealing stuff left and right from them for my Star Frontiers game. I absolutely love the material that they're putting out. So, thanks for watching my video. Thanks for being a subscriber if you're a subscriber. And if you've not subscribed, please do hit the like, subscribe, and bell icon and help me build the channel. But until then, I will see you in the frontier.